Hello and welcome back to another Dodgeball video. In today's video, we have episode 24 of Terminology Tuesday. So if you're new to my channel, Terminology Tuesday was a video series I did last year where I had a term of the week and I basically broke down where it kind of fit into the bigger picture that is the sport of dodgeball. And that was either a rules breakdown, a strategy breakdown, or both. And it was kind of geared towards beginners and kind of leaning into intermediate players. And I ended the series and then a little bit after I ended the series, I finally started was able to play dodgeball again. And as I was playing, I realized I missed four key terms that I use and I know a lot of teams use a lot. And while they're semi straightforward, I still thought it'd be worth to do a video breaking them down. And those four terms are trade, trap, hold, and bait. And so today I'm gonna kind of break those four down one by one. So let's jump right into it. So term number one is going to be a trap. Now a trap is at least what we call it in the US. I don't know if other countries say something different, but a trap is essentially when the ball hits a live player and a dead object at the same time. Since it's simultaneous, it results in an out. So an example of when this is most common would be the ball hits your toe and the ground at the same time, or you're on your knees and the ball hits your knee pad and the ground at the same time. So since it's simultaneous, but the ball does hit you, it is deemed an out. And in pretty much all competitive rule sets I've ever played, that is deemed an out. And it is in WBBF. And now I have played a rec league or two where it's not an automatic out. And usually at that point, um, it's a player's discretion. So a lot of times you'll see the players who are used to it being an out because they play competitive will typically go out when that happens. And then the players who don't normally play competitive don't understand that rule and it's not enforced, so they'll stay in. But um, ultimately, like in the competitive sense, if you're playing foam, especially a trap is an out. Term number two is going to be trade. Now you'll see a trade happen in the game when two opposing players get each other out at the same time. And now you'll see this happen naturally like throughout the game sometimes, but the instance I'm mostly referring to is when one of those players is in a vulnerable position and they realize that they're probably going to get hit. And so in order to try and make it a net zero and even it out, they're at least gonna take the opponent out with them and also throw at them. So. I see this a lot, like if a player slips and they get caught on the ground and they can't get up fast enough and the other team is charging them. And so, you know, they'll kind of be laying there and they'll just go for the throw at the opponent and hope that they at least hit the opponent too if they hit, get hit. And then I also see this most commonly when um, a team throws on offense and they're too slow to back up and the other team is playing aggressive. So they'll charge the line and they get caught flat footed. And so then they kind of just have to let their ball go and hope that they um, at least make a trade because they know they're probably going to get hit there. It's usually when one vulnerable person who's in a vulnerable spot kind of realizes they're about to get hit. And so they just try and net zero it. Now, of course, you don't necessarily want to trade. You always want to come out on top and not get hit. And hopefully sometimes that happens for you. Um, but you especially don't want to trade if you're in a like 2v5 situation because then the other team's still going to have four players in and you're going to leave your poor teammate in by themselves. So you really want to avoid it. And then vice versa, though, if you're the team with five people and the other team only has two, then if you get in a spot where you got to make a trade or you can even try and force a trade, get the other team caught off balanced and get the trade in, well, then your team is 4v1 and that's really good odds for them. So term number three is going to be hold. And this one's pretty straightforward. It's saying hold your ball, you're not throwing or don't throw. Um, but most commonly, um, this happens in the play huddle when you call the play and say one of your teammates doesn't hear it and you already know they're not throwing anyways and you don't want to repeat the play because it's going to take too long. You just say hold. It's a quick way to say don't throw, you're not throwing. Um, so they know to go up there and pump fake but not to release their ball. Um, but yeah, it just means hold, don't throw. Term number four is bait or baiting. So it's simply when you are um, pretending like you're not paying attention or you make it seem like you're gonna go for a block with the intention of tricking your opponent and trying to get them to throw at you solo to where you're either gonna turn and go for the catch or you're instead of blocking it you're going to drop your blocking ball and go for the catch and now it, it's important to note that it's baiting whether or not you come away with the catch because you still baited them um but of course 
you don't want to get out there you want to come away with the catch now you can also do this with pump faking as well you can be up at the line pump faking and the opponent is going to think like maybe you're the one throwing and they're going to try and snipe you but you quickly drop your ball drop down and go for that catch and i want to do a video on baiting uh later on where i kind of break down some techniques on um, how to turn your body, how to move your body to secure that catch when you are baiting. And, and strategy-wise, a great um, time to use baiting is when you're playing a team that likes to play aggressive, they like to snipe a lot on defense, and they like to do a lot of counter throws, so you know that they're likely to throw at you when you're up at the line, and so you try and get that solo ball at you. Because obviously when you bait, you don't want to have two or three balls coming at you. You want that solo throw where you can just hone in on it. So a lot of times it's great if you know a team plays aggressive on uh, defense to um, tell your team, hey, let's bait those catches and pump fake a lot and get them to throw at you and then go for that catch. Or you can, if you're trying to do it when you're on defense, you know, you can give tunnel vision to the person in front of you when really out of the corner of your eye, you're hoping that that person over there throws at you or a person, if you're on the left side over there, throws at you and you just turn and go for the catch. But you pretend like you have tunnel vision, like you don't see them. So they think they have a, a, a quick shot on you, but really you're just gonna turn and go for the catch. And same with the blocking ball, you can like, um, hide behind your blocking ball, act like you're not going to drop it, act like, look like you're going for a block, drop the ball, go for the catch. And it's a lot of times if a, a player thinks that you are just going to go for the block and like they're running low on time, they'll just throw it straight at your blocking ball and that's when you they made the mistake, you drop your ball and you go for that catch. But it's all about trying to find the right situations where you know you might get away with getting a baited throw. I hope you guys found these four term breakdowns helpful. Again, I'm going to link in the description the playlist for the other Terminology Tuesdays. There's 23 episodes of them and they're great for anybody who needs a rules refresher or is looking for more strategy tips. A bunch of the videos break down these things. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment with any other dodgeball topics you'd like me to cover, and I'll see you guys next Friday.